Hello, my name is Lowell Vanderpool and this channel is dedicated to IT students, IT professionals, and anyone who enjoys learning technical subjects. Many IT students and IT professionals have academic knowledge, may have passed a certification, may be employed, but are finding when they deal with their knowledge of networking, they've never had the opportunity to put that knowledge into practical everyday use. I wanna give you some ideas on how to learn networking in a different way to take academic knowledge and start helping you pass that exam that you're struggling with, or if you're an employee, to really build your skill set so that next employer will find you very attractive. There are two families of products that can really help you learn networking. One is the SOHO router family of products, and this is really the small office home office routers. If you're studying for a CompTIA exam, that usually is 10 workstations or less for an SOHO router. There's also a product line called SMB routers, small medium business routers. They vary by manufacturer, but typically between 50 and 100 workstations. Both of these pieces of equipment are powerful and can help you learn networking on a whole new level. Now, if your education and training budget is small, SOHO routers, small office, home office routers, are probably your best option. They have lots of business features. They allow you to learn networking in a way that you can't with your home router. They are typically 10 workstations or smaller. They're often used for retail shops, doctor's offices, medical clinics, realtor offices, insurance offices, fast food and restaurant. Here's an example. This is a Cisco RV325 dual gigabit WAN VPN router. It has a lot of functionality. And if you can buy it used or refurbished, this is a great router that you can buy. It allows you to develop your network skills and keep the cost of your training low. Now, Mr. Vanderpool, Aren't SOHO routers and SMB routers very similar to what we have in our house or consumer routers? Yes, that's true, but let's look at the differences. Let's look at SMB routers and some of the features they have that consumer routers do not. They have a lot more business features, which is what you want to gain skills in. They have auto patching for security. Wireless is typically an option in an SOHO business router. Dual LAN for reliability, dual administration. Now on the consumer routers that you typically buy for your home, they're inexpensive. They focus more on wireless speed and wireless distance. They very rarely get a software update, which puts them always at security risks. And they're designed to be simple to set up. IT students and IT professionals need to pass many certifications. Those certifications want basic networking skills. There's no better way to pass these exams or better prepare yourself for that next employer than to buy some low-cost equipment and actually learn how to set up an SOHO SMB router how to set up firewalls, configure them, troubleshoot them, learn more about network protocols, wired and wireless technologies. What about WAN technologies, a security, and so much more. As my years as an IT instructor, I often counseled students who came from another community college or from a university or from another training institution, and they were very frustrated. They had academic knowledge, they had past certifications, but they were just not attractive to employers. And the main reason is those employers want skills. They want practical installation, troubleshooting, configuring skills in networking in all areas of IT work, not just knowledge. Most of us don't have $5,000 for a budget of equipment. So by selecting the right refurbished SMB router or used SMB router, you can take your academic knowledge of IP addressing and actually design and assign subnets. You can connect and configure VLANs and actually watch it work. You can configure and test VPN circuits. You can configure different VPN types of circuits. Configure QoS and actually watch it really work. Configure firewalls and troubleshoot them. Those are the things that employers want you to be able to do.
Now, all of these SOHO SMB routers are small products, one tiny box. Some of them are eight inches long. Some of them are a 19 inch rack. How do you get all of these functions, router, VPN server, DHCP server, firewall, switch functionality, and sometimes even optional wireless all in one package? We want to better understand how all this functionality can fit into a piece of equipment that can fit in the palm of your hand, not so that we can recommend it to a business client. That takes a lot more knowledge and a lot more experience, but so that we can choose the right product to help us learn. Now, let me stop for a minute and give you some encouragement. There are a lot of IT students and newly hired IT employees who struggle understanding network concepts. Let's understand networking is a challenge to learn. Do not judge your ability to succeed in the IT field because you have to work hard to learn something. I have met bright, educated people with so much potential, and yet they did not do well in IT and they did not do well in their career. Now that's not taking away from people that are bright and educated and have potential and do well. I'm trying to encourage people who are having to work really hard to master these concepts and gain these skills. Success is more than academic skills. It's integrity, it's personal growth, it's respecting people, it's humility, it's just plain hard work. If you find yourself having to work really hard to gain the skills and knowledge in the IT field, you've got a lot of good company. Let's look at this block diagram that shows how the components and functions that we need in order to connect a local area network to an ISP and an ISP to the internet. The ISP brings many important things. The ISP brings a DNS server, an ISP router. It brings the last mile to your local area network. That last mile could be coax, fiber, could be cellular, it could be DSL. Once we connect to our router, we need a firewall, we need a network address translation or port address translation capability, we need a VPN server, we need a internal router, we need a DHCP server, a Samba server if we want print or file sharing. We need a layer two switch. We need wireless radios for our wireless connectivity. All of that is the basic functionality to connect a local area network to an ISP to the internet. Now, when we're doing this in an enterprise network environment, we're doing the same thing. We're spending a lot of money. We're using a 19 inch rack. We're buying discrete routers, discrete switches, discrete devices, but we're doing basically the same thing. So how is it that we're able to take all this incredible network functionality and put it in something in the palm of your hand? Well, the same reason that you're able to take this incredible cell phone with all of its technology, it's based on the concept of SOC, System on a Chip Integrated Circuits. The same technology that is miniaturizing incredible power in your cell phone is taking that same ability and miniaturizing incredible power into a circuit board and a small appliance. With a few selected system on a chip integrated circuits, some RF radios and controllers, power supplies, proper jacks for input and output, an embedded Linux operating system on it, you've got an SMB router or an SOHO router. Here's an example of an SOC integrated circuit. This is a MediaTek MT7629. You can just spend a few minutes looking at the block diagram of what's inside of a tiny integrated circuit. And it basically has almost all the functionality of a router. They're designed to work in conjunction with other SOC chips like the MT7531B chip. Now this particular SOC integrated circuit can give you with its CPU, memory, storage capability, input output capability, can give you a 3.5 gigabit bandwidth for a small business router or a broadband router. Now this is a product from a company called Banana Pi. It's an open source hardware platform that takes those very integrated circuits we just showed you and puts them on a circuit board and allows designers to choose operating systems to build a pretty substantial powerful SMB router. There are many companies that make these integrated system on a chip integrated circuits. Broadcom, Qualcomm, Marvel, Atmel, Altera, Microchip, MediaTek. These different integrated circuits can work well for product lines like SOHO routers and they have product lines for the more substantial, more expensive 
SMB router. Here is a block diagram of one of the top of the line SOC integrated circuits used by a lot of SMB manufacturers. You can just spend a minute and look at all the functionality in this one tiny integrated circuit. Now, lower cost SOHO routers, SOC chips are critical to these product lines. They lower the total cost of ownership. They have the business features that you're looking to use in order to learn networking. They have lower bandwidth support, so they don't have a lot of bandwidth, but there are many serious concerns about security, but they are perfectly fine for learning network on a budget. Now, SMB routers also use a selection of SOC integrated circuits, but typically higher end products. They're more powerful CPUs, they have more RAM. They're designed for operational resilience, usually dual WANs, so that if one ISP goes down, they can fail over to, say, a cellular ISP. Typically, total cost of ownership is higher. They have a lot of really nice business features. Higher bandwidth support, more security, better technical support. If you can afford a used or refurbished SMB router, it's the best way. Now, the operating systems that run these SOHO routers and SMB routers are typically Linux. It's the most popular. They typically embed it. Now, some of them have a GUI interface. Some of them have an HTML interface with a cloud connection. Juniper uses their Juno S, which is a great operating system. Cisco uses on many of their SMB routers a version of iOS. There's also a, an operating system called OpenWRT. Here's an example of the interface for Cisco's RV line of SOHO routers. It uses a Linux operating system with a GUI interface. Now this is TP-Link's business side of their products. And again, they use Linux with a GUI interface. Take a look at this diagram. This is a typical small business network network topology. Now for training, if you can afford an SMB router, they're just more powerful. They have higher bandwidth capability. They include ASICs and GPUs for encryption, decryption for VPN, getting them more bandwidth out of their VPN circuits. They're more secure. They have dedicated CPUs, typically more powerful ARM chips. Sometimes they put Intel Atom processors in them. They use sometimes more proprietary operating systems. So that's where you want to be careful. If you're buying a used or refurbished SMB router, make sure that you have the rights to the software. Some features will require additional licensing. So watch out for that with the SMB routers. They usually have automatic updates and patches and they have a little higher price. Now let's talk about Thoroughput. As we talk about SMB and SOHO routers, let's look at Thoroughput. First, I want you to look at the graphic on the right. Notice where it says router 18.5 gigabits per second. That means with not a lot of functionality turned on in this router, from the WAN port to the LAN port, I can get about 18.5 gigabits in this particular router scenario. But look what happens when I start enabling firewall capabilities, or I'm doing more packet and inspection. My bandwidth goes down by half, 9.93 gigabits per second. And then if I turn on VPN with IPsec, 1.77 gigabits per second. Very important to understand this. Now, when I purchased my home router, which is what you see in this picture, I was very interested in Thoroughput from the WAN port to the LAN port. And you could see I ran a speed test just prior to building this PowerPoint slide. And you can see I got about 1.1 gigabits per second. So from the WAN port to the LAN port, which is basically router functionality, I'm getting about a gig through this router. Now here's a Netgear appliance that you can use for a home network or a small business. And it's about $189. Look at the performance just from WAN to LAN, using the router functionality only, about a gigabit per second from the WAN to the LAN. Once I enable more firewall capability, it reduces that to about 607 megabits per second. But the minute I turn on VPN with IPsec, 247 megabits per second. Those are things you really want to understand. Now, can you live with very, very slow network while you're trying to learn if you purchase a cheaper SOHO router? Absolutely. You don't need high performance, but it's important 
important to understand this. Now here's a business scenario where I've got $1,200 SMB router with a $99 a year software licensing fee that goes with that router. You can see again, I can get about 18.6 gigabits from LAN to LAN, start enabling the firewall, more packet inspection, drops down to almost half. And then if I enable VPN with IPsec, about two gigabits. Now there's lots of companies in the SOHO SMB router space. Let's take a look. We have Checkpoint, Fortnite, Dell Enterprise has a variety of products out there. HP Enterprise has a variety of products. Netgear does primarily SOHO routers. D-Link, again, the same. Cisco has both SOHO and more of the SMB product line. TP-Link, NetGate, Banana Pie, WireGuard, Juniper, Ubiquity. So there's many, many options to choose from. The market varies in price from high-end $600 to $2,200 with yearly fees. This is also an interesting place where we're seeing open source really play a role. Now, PFSense is an open source firewall router software. You can simply download a copy of FreeBSD with PFSense built in. You can install it on your own PC hardware as long as you have two network cards. You can put it into a Hyper-V virtual machine or a VMware virtual machine. You can actually get this in Azure. You you can actually purchase this in AWS. This is a very powerful option for students that want to keep their costs down but really play with some powerful routing capabilities. Another group is OpenWRT. They provide open source router and wireless operating systems. This particular product has specific images for specific type of hardware. Great functionality, great features, again, very low cost, great for learning, even on consumer routers. Limited performance on wireless. I found this frustrating to get really good wireless performance, even when I did a lot of tweaking with their options. Now, there you have it. You've got a lot of knowledge now about SOHO routers, SMB routers. Which one will you think will work best for you? You can get them used, refurbished. I would avoid eBay. There are lots of third-party companies that sell these products refurbished or used. Watch for our future lessons where we're going to use this type of equipment and we're going to set up VLANs. We're going to configure VPN circuits. We're going to look at QoS, look at firewalls in depth. I'm going to demonstrate exactly exactly what you can also do with your equipment. For many of you that are watching right now, you've already done some of this. I would love some of your feedback and comments in our comment section about equipment you've purchased that you had a lot of success with. We'd love your input, thoughts, and ideas.